Here's today's Money Metals Minute brought to you by MoneyMetals.com. Gold and silver fell last week uh, and opened highly, well, excuse me, significantly lower in Asia last night. Uh, not a positive start to the new week, particularly for silver, which just broke below the range where it's been trading in the past two months. Uh, following six months of performance and record levels of speculative interest, a consolidation in the precious metals area is expected. Here's a special report from Mike Gleason of Money Metals Exchange. It is my privilege now to be joined by Gerald Salente, publisher of the renowned Trends Journal. Mr. Salente is a highly sought after guest on news programs throughout the world and has been forecasting some of the biggest and most important trends before they happen for more than 30 years now. And I want to start out by asking you about this massive disconnect between what the economic data is telling us versus what the stock market is saying to the investment world. For instance, we have the lowest rate of expansion in the U.S. economy since the 1940s. China is slumping, as are many other major global economies, not to mention the economic issues over there in Europe. Yet the equities markets continue to make new highs nearly every week, with the S&P and the Dow continuing upward into uncharted territory. So what's going on here? Are the economic numbers really better than what we're being told, or is the stock market being propped up? The stock market's being propped up. We said this beginning with uh, quantitative easing when it began and we said that this was not a recovery it's a cover-up and the numbers don't lie the liars lie and the markets are lying well you look at the facts and here are the facts you had a stretch of merger and acquisition activity unparalleled in world history because they're borrowing money for nothing and they're buying up companies and then you look at the other facts. And the facts are that stock buybacks are at record highs. I mean, what was it, like the, the first three months of this year, you're, you looked at about, what, $160 billion worth of stock buybacks. And all this has done is juiced the equity markets. You look at fact after fact, the numbers don't lie. And all this is doing, again, it, it's boosting up equity markets that have should have failed a long time ago. The P.E. ratios are out of line. Oh, how about this one? Hey, let's look at corporate earnings. Why not? How many quarters have they been down in a row? So, again, this is – it's gambling. It's Ponzi-nomics. It's not capitalism. They, they better start t getting rid of that word – starting with economics 101 this is not a capitalist society in the west it's bankism nothing's changed in the days that jesus christ chased out the money changes out of the temple with a whip it's just a different group of names man doing the same dirty deals propping up the markets to enrich themselves when we had you on back in the spring, I asked you if we were going to see another interest rate increase from the Fed following the paltry 25 basis point hike they did. You said they couldn't raise them because the, the market couldn't handle it. Are they finally going to have to follow through and raise rates at least somewhat? And, and what about the possibility of a surprise? Maybe they follow Europe and Japan and, and go to negative interest rates or even helicopter money. I think they'll go to helicopter money before they go to negative rates, because the negative rates aren't working at all. I mean, you look what's going on. I mean, the, the, the numbers coming out of negative rate countries like Japan, so, <laughs> where they have Abenomics now since 2012, basically, it began. And you're looking at no growth coming out of Japan at all, quite the opposite, in fact. So what's going to happen? It's only going to – there's no way out. The central banks have run out of juice. And the only thing, again, they're, they're pumping up are these, these fake markets. And the other reason, Mike, they can't raise rates is because look what's going on now with the emerging markets. The MSCI index is boom. They're popping back up from, all, from their lows. Because all this hot money is flowing back into them. If the Fed raises rates, all of these emerging markets that borrowed this money, when the quantitative easing and the dollar was really cheap, all that hot money that flew into there, countries and companies borrowing trillions, now they have to pay it back. 
they, they pay it back as the dollar value rises, as their currencies go down. What does that mean? More problems. So they can't pay the debt back, and they won't be able to pay it back even worse if there's such a thing, if their currencies continue to decline and the dollar gets stronger. I believe if the Fed raises rates, it'll be after the election. And, it, and even at that point, it'll be only 25 basis points. And look what happened the last time they raised them, last December, when they raised them 25 basis points. You woke up, happy new year, the Dow opened up the first two weeks, the worst in its history. And then you saw it on a global index, you're looking at about $6 trillion worth of equities wiped out the first month of January. The Ponzi scheme cannot continue if they raise rates. That was Gerald Salenti and Mike Gleason at MoneyMetals.com. Live prices uh, show gold right now trading at $1,336.20 per ounce. Uh, MoneyMetals.com shows silver trading at $18.97.